Welcome, Welcome to, to a couple, couple of bunkies. bunkies. As we mentioned in our last video, in the last two or three months, we had a huge renovation project with our kitchen and living room. The contractors worked their butt off on a strict deadline and they pulled off a miracle. I can't tell you how great the finished project actually ended up. Part of the remodeling process was picking out cabinet poles for our new cabinets. We went to the box stores and saw the limited supply that they had. And I was glad to see the wide variety that Etsy offered. We looked all over for unique cabinet poles, but deep in my heart I kept thinking, you know what, I think I can do this better. So I designed a template on ViaCAD and used the laser engraver to cut out the template. We have an affiliate link for Monport Laser where you can get 6% off your purchase of this model right here. Use the link below and use the promo code TIMOTHY6. I started off making the guidelines for where my screw was going to attach to the handle using the vector engrave setting. I wanted to use the templates with a flush trim bit on my router table, but the quarter inch material that I have that would have been perfect for this does not cut very well. So I'm using 1 8 material and we'll try to figure out what we can do. After the template is cut out, I set out the last remaining walnut boards from my grandparents' house to prepare for this project and throw them through the thickness planer. And no, I probably won't use all of the walnut just for this one project. Once the boards are nice and flat, I use a circular saw in order to cut them into smaller groups. After getting them a little smaller and easier to handle, I take them to the joiner so I can flatten one side so I can take it to the bandsaw and resaw the boards to 7 8 inch. With the amount of wood that I did, I had made around 50 drawer pulls. It's amazing how many handles you need when redoing a kitchen. Next I took the rough edges of the boards and smoothed them out with the thickness planer and ensured all of the boards were the same thickness. After the boards became all the same thickness, I used the laser engraved template in order to trace the pattern on the walnut boards. Then I cut out the profile with the bandsaw. I left a lot of space so I can trim it closer with a flush trim bit. I was honestly really looking forward to using the flush trim bit on my router table. But when it came to actually using it, I kind of chickened out. The 1 8 template kept shifting around on the double-sided tape, and the drawer pulls were too small and I would have had to make a specialty jig in order to hold them into place to cut them out. It would have made sense to make the jig because if I was making about 50 of these things. So I ended up getting the outer profile fairly close with the belt sander. Once I finally got the process down pat, I went ahead and tried to see if I could cut multiple at once. This test was a huge success, so I started preparing all of the boards so I can do this multiple times. I used paper shipping tape to help stack all of the boards together. If I were to do this again, I would use the same shipping tape and CA glue and accelerant. I found that if I used CA glue and the accelerant on the boards, sometimes I would rip out portions of the wood. By putting the painter's tape or the shipping tape on each board, putting the accelerant and CA glue, I could stick the boards together and easily take them apart once I was done. And I wouldn't have to worry about the shipping tape getting cut and sliding around like I had on this project. 
As of right now, I was focusing on these 7 inch poles. I did have one oddball pole that I needed to make, and it was a 16 inch towel rack. The throat of my bandsaw could barely take it, and wanted to make at least one 10 inch pole so I could use it as a template. Then I had around 30 of these ones to make. If you're enjoying this content, consider leaving us a like, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell icon if you'd like to see updates on what we're doing next. We premiere a new video every Thursday, where you can watch it with us, with live comments from you. We also run a woodworking business, Bunkies Woodworking LLC. Consider checking out our website our commissions are open right now if you'd like anything made. We ended up getting a new Triton oscillating sander, and I absolutely love this thing. I was able to sand up to the template with the oscillating sander. I was then able to tilt the table to 45 and chamfer the edges so I could round over the rest with a finished sander with lots of padding. Right now we're just working on the 14 7 inch handles. If anybody's wondering, this project actually had two days worth of recording material. I tend to speed everything up at least 20 times. So after I got done making these drawer poles. I brought them upstairs and we had a shock when our cat went crazy. So, just for context, our cat is terrified of the, the drawer poles that I made. He was so freaked out that he got his tail puffed up twice the size and he started jumping around all over the room. Yeah, I've cuts all over me because of that. And we were trying to get him to know that it's an inanimate object and it's never gonna hurt him. Even had him smell it, and now he's daring all by himself to see exactly what spooked him. And he's trying to make friends with the walnut drawer poles. And we, we uh, had the dog there just to show the cat that it's nothing dangerous. The dog's touching it without, and, and the dog thought it's a stick and he grabbed it in his mouth. Usually, this cat is very brave. He even goes downstairs where all the tools are making noises and all kind of wood products there. So I don't think it's wood that's bothering him. Right. I think it's the shape. Give me, give me that. I end up following the same process for the rest of the handles. And I coat all of the handles with epoxy. I ended up using some scrap wood in order to make some drawer knobs. And based on the cat's reaction, I made some snake toys for the cat. After the epoxy had cured, I went ahead and did some light sanding on all of the poles. This is a real important step in order to make sure the final product is very smooth. So this project, I already had a made CAD file that I could have uh, done the profiles with a CNC. If I were to do this again, I might consider doing it with a CNC rather than doing it by hand. But there's something very novel about doing something like this by hand 
where every single pull is a little bit different and unique in their own way. It seems very popular nowadays that we have these impossibly made things. Items that have never been held by human hands until we remove them from their original packaging. Now I start preparing them all for another coat of epoxy. I enjoy looking at things and finding pencil marks from the creator. It adds a human touch to all the things that we have. Once the epoxy has cured overnight, I removed them from the table. Some of them got pretty stuck, so I had to use some healthy persuasion in order to get them off. Some of the table went off with the project, so I had to gently sand off the bottom so I could have a flush mounting surface once again. After using the oscillating sander, I went over each of the projects with a piece of sandpaper glued onto a flat board so that it would be completely flush. And now it's time to make a jig in order to make the holes for each of these poles. I knew the dimensions of where the holes were going to be from the template and I was able to use CA glue in order to set the pole into place and drill up from the bottom of the table, ensuring that all the holes would be the exact same on all of the poles. This is incredibly important so it's easy to install the poles later on. And I repeat the same process for all the poles that I had made. And I'm using the CA glue painter's tape method that I had mentioned earlier. This made it incredibly easy to remove the pole from the table without getting it too stuck. I didn't have any all thread available, but I did have quarter inch bolts that fit into the barrel nuts that I was using for this project. So I created a jig out of a 2x4 in order to cut multiple bolts at once so I could keep the all thread from them. And I was able to attach the all thread with a drill bit, CA glue, and accelerant so they wouldn't come out of place. I started off by attaching the barrel nuts to the all thread, then screwing them on to the handle with an allen key. Afterwards, I add a drop of CA glue and accelerant in order to finish the project. I also created a small testing jig so I can ensure that the holes were perfectly lined up and I could adjust the positioning just enough in order to make it easy for install. And this is me testing every single one to make sure they fit inside of the holes. My wife and I took measurements of the faces of the cabinets where the drawer poles would be installed. We then took that data into ViaCAD and created templates that we were able to print out. The templates gave us a very consistent result when installing our drawer poles. For some of the drawer poles that we would be using multiple times, I ended up going downstairs and cutting the template out of wood. The paper templates had a tendency to shift and move just a little bit, and if I was going to use the same template over and over and over again, making it out of wood was really the way to go. And since I had the drawings, I could have really just used the laser engraver in order to do the templates. And here's the final result. It ended up turning out beautiful. If you like this content, please consider subscribing. We release a new video every Thursday as a premiere, and you can talk directly with me and my wife as we're watching it ourselves. To get notifications on when we release new videos, consider ringing the bell icon.